Why the troubled look? Why are you looking downcast? Why does it look like your world is about to end or crumble? Is your life disjointed? Is your life out of course? Have things been the other way for you? Has your life been made by disappointments and failures? Your worry, sorrow, gloomy face, downcast look and negative actions would not get anything done. It would not take away the issue or the challenge that befalls or is confronting and facing you. Your worry is only feeding the challenge at hand and making it stronger than you think. Your worry is like a force adding fuel to the matter at hand. When you worry, you are saying the challenge or issue at hand is bigger than God. When you worry or downcast by an issue confronting you, it shows you believe in something else rather than God and that which you believe in has been unable to help you. Have you taken the matter to God? Have you geared up and met him in court? Has your matter been tabled to God? Know things and remind yourself of it daily. What God can't do does not exist. What is bigger or difficult for God hasn't been found and can never be found. If you know the God who reigns over the world, you would let go of the worry. You would confidently face anything because you have a God who is in charge and watches over everything. People seem to be so worried, sad, troubled and afraid these days. With the present global happening, the lockdown, spread of the virus, loss of job and means of livelihood and so many negative things happening. People tend to be worried, remaining in a state of uneasiness or troubled condition. It is not wrong to be thoughtful, mindful and conscious of the happening, but it becomes wrong when you place the issue or challenge at hand bigger than God. It is not the right approach. There was a reason God kept repeating this phrase in the Bible. The just shall live by faith. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, this scripture keeps coming through. Why? Because God knows that we would face and see many things as we journey and spend time here on earth. But what is paramount is not to lose faith or sight of who sent you to the world. You are not on your own. You don't own yourself. You aren't here by mistake. And as such, why should you be worried, downcast or troubled about things that are beyond your power or control? If you want to remain just, you must live by faith. You must always remember you belong to someone who neither sleeps nor slumber. And as such, he is mindful of all that concerns you, your well-being and your successful stay on planet Earth. Stay focused and don't lose sight of him that has called you. Remain in him and see him turn everything around. Have faith in him and what he can do. It is time to hear and study God's word the more. It is time to jack your faith and belief system. When you worry, you have lost sight of who you are following. A small child isn't afraid to follow the father wherever he is taking him to, because he trusts and believes that the father is with him. Have you considered the births of the air, the butterflies, the lilies in the garden, and other beautiful creatures and pieces that God made? Are you not better and more important than them? But the Heavenly Father always makes provisions for them every moment of the day. You are in the very plan of God. You are in His mind and the great things He would do with and for you. Note that the thoughts and the plans He has for you are for good and not for evil, to give you a future, hope and an expected end. The very hair of your head are numbered. He holds the future and you are in His palm. But when you worry, you are showing that you don't trust Him nor the words He has said concerning you. You have an alternative plan and course of action you intend to take and he would back out and leave you to have it your way since you are worried and don't trust him again. There is a remedy and solution to whatever situation you find yourself in. The Bible in Philippians 4, verse 6 through 7. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. 
but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. 7. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Instead of looking downcast or being worried, hand over your concerns to Him. One may ask, how do I hand it over? The scripture here says, through prayer and supplication. When you pray and remind Him of His words and promises to you, you are strengthening your belief system and telling God you have no other means and trust no other thing or person to solve or change the narrative. You are simply enforcing His supremacy over you and all that concerns you. And I tell you, God's word doesn't fall to the ground. It doesn't return to Him void. It must accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent forth. Arise and pray. Pray until something happens and continue to pray even after something has happened. You have no duty being worried or troubled, but you have to table the matter to Him by praying. You change things under prayer. It is time to rise and pray more and stop the worry, sadness, fear and oppressed countenance. He wants to hear you pray. If a suckling mom cannot forget her child nor a father give his child a snake when he asks for fish, when then would God not show up and act in your favor when you ask? Stop the worry and pray. Pray until change appears in heaven. Someone may ask, if he cares, why then did he allow these things to happen? It is all to the glorification of his name and for you to allow him to perform wonders. He would not act if you don't make demands. In Matthew 7, verse 7 through 8, Ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. 8. For everyone who keeps on asking receives and he who keeps on seeking finds. And to him who keeps on knocking it will be opened. You have the responsibility to ask, to seek him and to knock until what you want has been given unto you. Nothing would happen when you don't ask. And how do you ask? By praying and tabling the matters to Him. Once you ask, you seek and you knock, He steps into the situation until the best is enacted. The devil would not want you to progress or be happy. He always wants to see you in pain, worried and troubled. But God has made an escape route that whenever you feel so, quickly run to Him and have your confidence back. He repeated this in admonition of Peter in 1 Peter 5, verse 6 through 8. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride so that He may exalt you to a place of honor in His service at the appropriate time. 7. Casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on Him. For He cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. 8. Be sober, well-balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. The devil is out to break your faith, hope and belief in God. He would try to make things look hard and problematic. But the encouragement here is that in all things, when things begin to look tough, the journey seems hard and difficult. When the problems, issues and things ahead or in front of you look huge and insurmountable, cast all those things to him. All the cares, all the worries, all the burdens and all the concern to Him. 
He is always there and ever ready to carry your yoke and your load. He said you should bring all your trouble to Him because you can't carry them alone. They weren't made for you to carry alone. They were made for you to seek His assistance and through that, God's mighty hand and act would be seen on display. Great men of old have trusted God and allowed God to perform wonders. Some like us were worried before holding the horns of the altar and setting their knees to pray. He never failed any of them. He was not changed and would not change now. Gather yourself up. It's time to study the word more and build your faith and belief system. It's time to lean on his power and let him do it his way. It's time to pray more. It's time to cast the worries and cares to him. If you allow him to lead, you would see it turned around quickly. Let God lead.